Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Hongliang Tian. Uh, you can call me Tate if you find it's hard to pronounce my Chinese name, Hongliang. <laughs> I'm a system architect for, at the confidential computing team uh, in uh, Ant Group, uh, which is a, a fintech company based in China. So my talk today is uh, re-architect Outloom for the next gen Intel SGX. Uh, there are three parts. The, in the first part, I've talked about um, uh, I'll give a brief introduction to, to the Outcome project if you are not familiar with it. And uh, in the second part, um, I will give you a glimpse of the next gen Intel SGS. I think many of you will be curious about the, the how 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 is, how does the new uh, Intel SGS perform. And the, the third part, which is also the, the main part of this uh, talk, is about uh, how we uh, have uh, re-architected the Outcome Lab OS to, to deliver uh, optimal performance on the next-gen Intel SGX. So, okay, so let's go uh, with the first part. Uh, the, the, the mission of the Outcome project is to empower everyone to run every app inside the enclaves. That's, that is our, uh, uh, our hope. <laughs> uh, so this is the architecture. Um, uh, the Outcome CLI, the command line tool, has uh, two primary uh, commands. The, the first one is the build command. Uh, you use the build command in the trusted development environment. Uh, the build command can turn uh, a, a trusted user uh, user uh, file system uh, and um, uh, turn it into an Outcome trusted image uh, so that you can uh, upload the, the trusted image into an untrusted development environment. And in the untrusted deployment environment, you use the run command to uh, start the enclave, and the library OS will uh, load the trusted image and start your program. And so with, uh, this is uh, a very high level overview of the Outcome uh, project. Uh, to give you a feel of how Outcome works, this uh, here is a very simple demo. And you have a hardware program, and you use your uh, best friend GCC to compile the program. And uh, of course, the program can run on Linux. Uh, this is the one too. And uh, the first command to use is the outcome you need. It's quite like it's just like a git init. Use the outcome init command to 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 make the uh, the the current directory into an outcome context. Then you then you uh, copy the your program into the image directory. Then uh, you have the outcome image and the enclave. Then you use the third command is uh, outcome run to run your program. Uh, this is how simple it is to uh, run an unmodified uh, uh, Linux binary on on, on Outloom inside the enclave. Okay. So, uh, um, so uh, uh, as many of you uh, may have known that uh, the 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 new uh, the new uh, uh, next gen Intel SGX will be available on the uh, upcoming third gen Xeon scalable processors uh, Ice Lake. Uh, there were uh, two major changes uh, in the new SGX. Uh, the first one is the relaxed threat model. And uh, this new SGX will target use cases uh, where the physical environments are, are trusted. And so uh, the new SGX still uh, provides the full protection against cyber attacks, but it only provides partial protection against the physical attacks. So, that, that, so the, this is the, uh, the relaxed threat model. So in, in exchange of the, the, the weakened threat model, you get much improved scalability. And uh, so the, this new SGS will be the first one with a very huge enclave uh, page cache. Uh, it's basically that you, uh, it's uh, up to one terabyte of uh, enclave memory. And, and uh, you have a, a minimum overhead uh, of memory access inside the enclave. And the, the, the second uh, uh, improvement is that this, this is the first SGS implementation um, that is available on multi-socket platform. So you will have many CPU cores for your Enclave programs. That is uh, very good, right? And uh, since we are, uh, uh, we are very curious about the, the performance of the new SGX, um, so we have measured the three major SGS overheads which is which are uh, enclave memory access, uh, enclave dynamic memory man, memory, uh, enclave dynamic memory management EDMM, and enclave switching. Uh, we measured the three overheads on on three different uh, SGS implementations. Uh, the first one is the the low end Pentium Silver uh, processor. The second one is Xeon E3 
uh, server processor. Uh, the, the third one is the upcoming new uh, Xeon scalable uh, processor uh, Ice Lake. So, uh, so since we have we are uh, under uh, uh, you know we we are told by Intel as the, as the last minutes that we cannot disclose the detailed performance data uh, before they launch uh, uh, the the new processor. So. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll just uh, show you our uh, uh, conclusion instead of the uh, detailed data. <laughs> so there are three uh, micro benchmark. The first one is the enclave memory access. Uh, we have measured uh, the the random memory access latency inside enclave uh, with uh, very various sizes of uh, working memory. Uh, so the the conclusion is that uh, the memory access inside enclaves on Ice Lake. Has a minimum overhead. Uh, it's basically the, the same as you you have uh, outside the enclave. So this is very good. Um, uh, for the EDMM, well, we have uh, measured the, the 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 cost of allocating enclave pages and deallocating enclave pages uh, with uh, with uh, various uh, number of uh, pages, uh, and we compared it to to uh, the the to the cost uh, of outside the enclave, which is uh, you use uh, a memory map, memory map system calls on Linux. Um, the, the conclusion is that um, uh, the EDM cost on Ice Lake are reduced compared to the previous two SGS implementation, but it's, but it's still very expensive. Uh, that's the conclusion. And the third one is enclave switching. The you know, enclave switching is that the CPU uh, enter or exist an enclave. That is enclave switching. Uh, we, we we measure the uh, we use the standard eco and on uh, ocom mechanism provided by uh, the Intel SGS SDK. And um, so uh, the conclusion is that the 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 cost of enclave switching on Ice Lake are are uh, greatly reduced. Yes, still very expensive if you compare it to uh, to the user kernel switching or uh, VM exit. Uh, so enclave switching is still expensive. Um, um, so we are we are uh, developers and designers of uh, SGS Library OS. So uh, so uh, we we want to uh, optimize uh, the the, the Alcon Library OS on this new uh, Intel SGX. So so here is the problem. Uh, uh, the the high cost of enclave switching will lead to poor I/O performance of the library OS. Uh, since since uh, usually when you're doing I/O in the library OS, you you will trigger enclave switching, and the high cost of EDMM, um, which will lead to a poor mem poor memory management performance of the library OS. This this is the, the two per two uh, performance problem that we we anticipated um, in in, uh, in the library OS. We also made, make two observations that um, on, the, on the, the good side is that uh, the new processor will have many more CPU cores. So uh, with this uh, CPU cores, uh, you, we, we can uh, explore, uh, explore uh, increased parallelism uh, at the library level. And we may, have, we, we may be able to use the polling-based I.O. So uh, this is the one uh, advantage of the new processor. Another thing is that since we have more enclave memory, and we may we may be able to use uh, more aggressive data caching or memory pooling to uh, increase the performance. Uh, so, in light of these observations, uh, the we we have started the, the a, a project named the Next Gen Alcolum NGO. Uh, in this project, we 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 have uh, rearchitected the Alcolum Lab OS with a new synchrony a, a new asynchrony central design. This uh, asynchronous central design uh, comes in four levels. From the bottom to the top, uh, they are at the language level. We want to uh, address the question of uh, how, to, how, how to express very complex async logic easily. And uh, the, on the next level, we want to uh, uh, solve the problem of uh, efficient scheduling um, the async, uh, uh, async code. And um, for for I/O, we we want to perform uh, a sync I/O very efficiently. That that is another uh, very important question. And ultimately, we want the the, the library's kernel to uh, have their system call accelerated with with all the asynchrony techniques. Yeah. Um, and the end result is that with this new uh, new design, the NGO project can deliver a close native performance on some of the most OS intensive workloads. Um, 
Okay, so um, uh, before before we, we dive into the detail of this uh, asynchronous central design, uh, you may have you may ask uh, why you want a sync. Uh, so uh, basically, with uh, asynchrony, we can uh, increase the the parallelism inside the liberal OS. Uh, increase the parallelism means uh, better performance. That is the in intuition here. Okay. Um, so the, the the first question is that uh, syn uh, asynchrony programming is hard. Um, that is why uh, usually you don't write a, a single uh, code. Okay. So this is where a single weight feature in Rust can help. Uh, uh, Rust, uh, uh, you know, uh, often is uh, written in Rust. And uh, Rust is the first system program language that supports a sync await. Uh, as the, the code snippet here show, um, so you have a, a sync function. You can design. You can use the async uh, keyword to design uh, to define an uh, async function. And so in a sync function, you can you can uh, perform time consuming operation. For example, a request which is a network I/O, and you can uh, uh, you can do so with the await keyword. Uh, so that uh, when you were uh, waiting for the I/O, uh, the 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 language and the runtime behind it uh, will uh, uh, switch to another uh, async task, and and after the I/O complete, and it will get you back. So basically, a sync await uh, enables uh, you to write a, a sync code in the sync way. Uh, you don't have to write uh, callbacks or event loops manually. So this is a great relief to to our to 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 our to to us as uh, programmers, and what's better is the a single waiting Rust is uh, is a zero cost abstraction uh, compared to to the a single wait implementation in JS JavaScript or C sharp. Uh, a single waiting Rust is uh, much uh, has a much uh, uh, lower overhead, which is uh, basically uh, is, I think it's a minimal overhead. So. Uh, with a think awaiting Rust, we can write complex a think logic easily with minimal performance impact. This is the the, the at the language level uh, of the of our uh, think centric design. Uh, let's move up to the next level. Let's say scheduling level. So how how are our tasks in NGO are scheduled? Uh, the the core of our uh, uh, design is coroutines. So uh, we have we we have many uh, very lightweight coroutines. Uh, at the uh, in the in the liberal space, uh, these coroutines are very fast to create and destroy, and have very minimal memory footprint. So we can uh, have lot of lots of them, and these coroutines are uh, and, so, uh, and a, a group of coroutines are uh, mapped to uh, a single host thread, so that we can uh, schedule these coroutines inside the enclave, completely inside the enclave, without uh, triggering the enclave switching. So they can uh, schedule the uh, cooperatively very very. Uh, Efficiently, and uh, for each coroutine, each coroutine can run either a liberalized task or a user task. Uh, if it's a user task, then that is basically mean a, is is uh, is correspond to uh, user user task. Use, uh, I mean user threats, and user threats are are uh, preemptible. So um, user threats are preemptively scheduled, and uh, uh, liberalized tasks are cooperatively scheduled. So this is our coroutine based in enclave scheduling. Though uh, with this uh, 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 mechanism, we can increase the level OS, OS level parallelism with uh, very minimal overhead. Uh, the, at the I/O level, we want to perform a sync I/O efficiently. So we introduce the uh, the the Linux I/O ring into uh, our library OS. So uh, our our ring, if you're not familiar with it, is a new uh, IO interface introduced in Linux kernel uh, 5.1, and is uh, is uh, being developed for very uh, is, uh, is is uh, still in a very uh, rapid development, and um, the current implementation has already support uh, uh, most IO operations. They are very fast. Uh, most importantly, uh, you can use our our ring. Uh, to uh, to do I/O without uh, system call. Um, uh, on the uh, the figure on the left has shown that um, uh, with our our ring, uh, the Alcon Liberalize can uh, submit I/O uh, request I/O request just by pushing the request into an I/O your ring submission queue. Which is a ring buffer that is shared between the user space and the Linux kernel, and the the Linux kernel can just 
just a pull request by just pulling from it. And when uh, Linux kernel uh, have the I/O completed, you can you can find the I/O completion uh, by just by just pulling the completion queue and the pop the response. So uh, this is very uh, speedy. Uh, um, so the the uh, we think this is our ring based uh, new switch list async I/O is uh, very good since uh, it can enable truly async I/O. In a switch list and speedy, speedy way, so uh, it's very useful to our uh, uh, for our purpose. Um, okay, so the uh, ultimately we want to accelerate user system calls. So um, so we so we we have uh, uh, used uh, two classes of async uh, techniques uh, in the NGO. Uh, the first, the first one, the first class is uh, is called uh, eager execution. Uh, so uh, eager execution, uh, we will, with eager execution, we perform some time consuming operations uh, just before the system call requests them. So when system call really arrive, the results are expected to to be ready, and we can return it to the user immediately. Okay, so uh, I'll give you uh, one uh, uh, concrete example, uh, which is uh, accept this call. So uh, traditionally, uh, when so this is how how an accepts the library lab this call are implemented in, in the most traditional way. Uh, so when an app um, uh, initiate and accept library this call, and here and the library receive the this call and do some uh, pre process, and after that the library will. Uh, we will uh, do a uh, Linux syscall to 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 ask a Linux kernel to 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 do the uh, network I/O, and so uh, so uh, in the traditional approach, you have to you have to do enclave switching and wait for Linux to complete the I/O. Um, if you if you are uh, if your implementation use some switch list technique, then you can save the enclave switching, but still you need to wait for Linux to complete the I/O before. The libraries uh, return the the system call, but with our uh, async approach, uh, we can we can immediately uh, return the accept the libraries this call without without uh, asking library uh, asking the Linux kernel to do uh, any I/O. This is because that uh, we we can do the async accept before the accept libraries this call even uh, even comes. Um, so, um, so uh, when, when we have a, a socket uh, starts listening, we will submit multiple uh, async accept to the to the Linux to the Linux kernel uh, using the IO ring. So, uh, in, in, uh, so uh, quite likely that uh, after we submit this async uh, async accept uh, request, uh, we'll get some of them uh, complete. Uh, even before the user uh, the user uh, invoke the accept uh, library syscall. So uh, so in, in in the optimal case, uh, uh, we will have the uh, the accept syscall complete and we can just return the the our accepted incoming connection uh, directly to our user uh, to, the, to the user app. Okay. So uh, we can we can uh, uh, greatly reduce the accept uh, latency. And um, and quite uh, quite similarly, and the read system calls can also be uh, accelerated this way. So this is how traditional approach uh, are done. The the read system call. If you are using a switch list technique, you can uh, you can save the enclave switching, but you still need to wait for the Linux kernel to do the read for you. Uh, so our async approach, with our async approach, uh, we we can uh, do uh, async reads before even before the read comes. Uh, for file for for file IOs, we uh, we maintain a, a page cache for them. So um, so, so if if uh, so uh, if if the 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 file reads are sequential, we can prefetch the data into the page cache. And so uh, when the when the read comes, um, uh, it's it's possible that that uh, we can fulfill the read uh, libby syscall directly from the page cache. And for so case. We maintain receive buffers for them, and uh, so right after uh, a socket is connected, uh, we will submit uh, a, a sync receive 
uh, as long as the receive buffer is not full. So, um, so when, so, so uh, if you are lucky and uh, we have a uh, risk complete and the receive buffer uh, is, is now empty, then we can fulfill uh, level S system call, a read system call uh, immediately from the, uh, just using the receive buffer. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, eager execution. Um, so the next class uh, of uh, of the uh, sync technique is called uh, promised execution. Uh, so um, so basically, uh, with this technique, we delay the execution of some time-consuming operations so that the system calls can be returned immediately, uh, while we can keep the original synchronous semantics of the system calls. Um, the, the one good example is, is the write system call. Um, uh, so uh, this is still the traditional way uh, to do the write. Um, you need endless switching. If you are uh, you, you're using switchless approach, uh, you you can avoid the endless switching, but you still need to wait for the write system call uh, to complete on the Linux side. And but uh, with our sync approach, uh, we can delay this write. So we we, we maintain page cat for files. So uh, so so for write library system call. The, the using so the libraries can can store the uh, the, the the user data uh, into the page cache, and uh, we can choose at a later time. For example, a background task uh, can flushes the dirty pages inside the page cache. Uh, yeah, so we can we can delay uh, delay the the writes to files with page cache, um, and for for so case we maintain send buffers. So uh, when you, you you when you want to do a write to a socket, the libraries can directly uh, store the the use data into the send buffers, and we can submit the, the async sense when at a later time. Okay, so this is this is uh, how we use the promise execution to uh, accelerate the write. Um, um, so this async technique not not only can uh, accelerate I/O. It can also accelerate, uh, for example, uh, memories uh, management, uh, as we have uh, pointed out that uh, uh, the EDMM uh, the inside enclaves are, are very costly. And so, uh, so um, for for the libraries to implement memory map, uh, the, it, uh, in the in the worst case, you have to allocate enclave pages and deallocate them dynamically. So this is very costly. Uh, with our uh, async approach, uh, we have we have uh, here's uh, how we solve this problem. We we have introduced a, a, a large memory pool of uh, of uh, enclave pages with uh, read write permissions and filled with zeros. So we have memory pool, and um, with this memory pool, we can fulfill the the memory map system calls directly uh, with this uh, memory pool if if it has uh, if it has uh, available enclave pages. And uh, when we uh, handle the unmap system call, uh, so there are some uh, like expensive cleanup need to be done. So we we will uh, uh, delay this. I uh, think uh, um, we'll delegate this uh, expensive cleanup to uh, to some cleanup or GC workers, and they can do so at the background in a, in a single way. So uh, we can reduce the 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 asynchronous overhead of memory map system call. So this is how uh, promise execution work. Uh, in summary, this is uh, this this is the uh, synchronous design in the NGO of, in the uh, NGO product. And um, so here are some uh, ex experimental evaluation. Uh, we have we, we want to answer the question that uh, how close are we to the to the to the dream <laughs> of uh, confidential computing with uh, confidence with uh, confidence in performance. So uh, we to answer this question, we think uh, the user is only uh, uh, interested in to know uh, our uh, gap uh, to Linux. Uh, so uh, the baseline is Linux, and uh, the, the so we we have we have uh, uh, measured the performance on uh, Xeon scalable processor, but uh, since we are under Intel's embargo, we cannot share the of the performance data on S Lake. Uh, but uh, uh, if if we are uh, using a uh, very uh, 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 small enough uh, EPC, uh, the, the performance on Xeon E3 will be uh, similar to uh, scalable process Ice Lake. So, uh, so, so here we'll present the results on Xeon E3. Uh, there are uh, four four micro benchmarks. Um, we can uh, sh uh, show the, the 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 first three, and 
the the fourth one is memory mapping, which use a large memory pool uh, cannot be done on the the on uh, E3 efficiently. So so the memory mapping uh, benchmark, benchmark will not be shown. Uh, so I think my, my time is uh, very uh, is is going to uh, run up. So I will uh, uh, <laughs> I will uh, show this result very briefly. Uh, so the scheduling result is that uh, uh, so this is how a scheduled yield is uh, cost on Linux and Joe. Uh, they're on the same level as you can see. And for for the socket I/O, uh, we have uh, write an echo server uh, in event loop fashion. And so uh, here is the throughput on Linux and NGO. As you can see, the, the performance is, uh, is at the same level. Sometimes Linux is faster, sometimes NGO is faster. And for, for uh, fail I.O., we have, uh, there are many data. Uh, the conclusion is that uh, with our page cache and the IRO ring, we can, we can deliver at the, at the same level of performance as Linux uh, in various uh, benchmarks, whether it's uh, uh, sequential race, random race, sequential rise, random rise. As you can see, the blue line is uh, mostly uh, above the, the 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 yellow line of Linux. So uh, so we can so uh, with this my friend, we have shown that uh, we can do an unencrypted file I/O uh, uh, on the bar on bar with uh, of, of with Linux. Okay, uh, so to wrap up, uh, the DRS Lake offer increased scalability, and we have uh, in the NGO product we have uh, we have some uh, new uh, async or central design, and we found out that Rust async await feature is uh, very good, and uh, and the library uh, can offer an extra benefit of uh, of uh, enable legacy app uh, enable legacy apps to leverage Linux our ring transparently. And uh, we have uh, NGO merging to Outlook shortly after Intel's official launch of Xeon.